Today we begin chapter six, which is called Discovering and Proving Circle Properties. So we'll be working with circles in this unit and investigating them kind of like we did with the polygons in the last unit and the triangles in the previous unit and the quadrilaterals and so on and so forth. We uh, will have one more type of shape to investigate a little bit, and that would be the circle. So this one's called 6.1 chord property. So we're going to be talking about chords and how they affect different angles and arcs within the circle. So first, let's review one definition that we had talked about way back in the first unit, and that is central angle. So a central angle is an angle whose vertex is at the center. the center of a circle, and whose sides are radii of the circle. Right, so just to be sure, let's go ahead and sketch that. If you take out your compass, Compass is going to be helpful in this unit since we are going to be dealing with circles. So let's go ahead and construct a circle. And let's put some points on the outside of the circle. So let's put a point, say, here. Call that A. Let's call the center B. And let's put a point over here and call it C. All right, now if we construct two radii here, so A to B and then B to C, we have now constructed a central angle. So this angle right here would be the central angle. So central angle, angle ABC would be a central angle. So the center of the circle is the vertex of the angle and the two sides of the angle are radii. So that's called the central angle. The second type of angle that we're going to reference here is called an inscribed angle, and this, I believe, is a new term for us. So an inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on the circle, and by on the circle we mean on the outside edge of the circle, and whose sides are chords. So let's go ahead and do a similar sort of construction here. Again, let's construct a circle. All right, just like before, let's put three points on the circle, except for this time, our three points are going to be on the outside edge of the circle. So if we call this A, and let's say we call this B, and let's say we call this up here C. And then let's go ahead and connect those up. So we've got A to B and then B to C. Okay? So this angle right here would be called an inscribed angle. Vertex is on the circle and its two sides are chords. So let's call that inscribed angle. Let me move my point back in here. So inscribed angle angle ABC. Okay, so we'll use those two types of angles in our investigation here. So let's investigate a little bit about how chords and central angles interact with each other. And by the way, remember back up here, central angle, let's say this is Let's say it's a 120 degree angle, I could measure it, but let's just say that for uh, just a little bit of an estimate here. That also means that the arc AC, arc AC is also equal to 120 degrees. So a central angle will always be the same as its arc measure. We talked about that back in the first unit, but central angle ABC is going to be the same as the measure of arc AC. 
Okay, so now let's go down. Construct a large circle, label the center O using your compass, construct two congruent chords in your circle, label the chords A, B, and C, D, then construct radii O, A, O, B, and O, C, and O, D. Okay, so a lot of stuff there. Let's go ahead and begin this construction. Let's start off, we'll note our center point, which we're gonna call O, and then we're going to construct our circle here. All right, and then construct two congruent chords. So let's see here. We're, let's say this is A, and so what we're gonna do is to make sure that we have a congruent chord here, we're gonna use our compass and actually measure this out a little bit. So let's make an arc up here. Okay, so where that crosses right there, let's call that point B. So now I've got A, B, and then let's go down and do something similar on the other side. So let's call this C, and keeping our compass exactly the same as it was before, centered at C, and let's make another arc up here. And where that crosses, let's call that D. Okay, so now if I connect up A, B, and C, D, I should have this chord congruent to this chord, All right? So those two chords are congruent to each other. That chord is congruent to that chord. All right, label the chords A, B, and C, D and construct radii O, A, O, B, O, C, O, D. Okay, so let's go ahead now and do the radii. So O to A, O to B, O to C, O to D. All right. Now what we can do is we measure out those angles now. I'm talking about angle o, A, O, B, so this angle right here, and C, O, D, that angle there. Now my board construction here might not be absolutely perfect, because sometimes it's a little tough to navigate around with these virtual protractors and compasses. So let's see here. If I take this and if I measure out this angle, you can maybe guess what is going to be true here. I think that that one looks pretty close to, let's see, 70, 80, 90 degrees. Would you believe that that's what we got there? And then if we look on this side, hopefully it's going to be pretty close to 90 degrees. It looks like I'm just slightly off of 90. Okay, it's more like, there we go. It's been pretty close. Those two angles are supposed to be exactly congruent and with the, with the active board here, it's a little bit tough to get my lines to be just perfect. But bottom line is, if we have a perfect construction here, we get those two angles to be perfectly congruent to each other. In our case, they end up being right about 90 degrees. So just by coincidence there, that's pretty close to 90. All right. so. With our protractor, we measured those two angles, so now we can write down the measure of each angle and how do they compare. So I talked about them being pretty close to 90 degrees, both of those angles. If it's a perfect construction, they should be congruent, which is one of our properties then. If two chords in a circle are congruent, then they determine two central angles that are congruent. Okay, so this right here, those two angles right there and there, those two central angles are congruent because these two chords out here are congruent to each other. So these two chords de determine two central angles. If we connect with radii back to the center, they determine two central angles that are congruent. Okay? So the next one that we want to look at is if two chords in a central angle are congruent, then what is true of their intercepted arcs? So on your sheet, it says to fold the circle construction, fold the circle, so that you can take a look to see what is true about these two arcs. I'm talking about this arc here and this arc here. So the arc on the outside, AB, and the arc here, CB. If we were going to, we could take a piece of string, 
measure that out. We could fold our triangle in half to see how those overlap. And what we should find out is those two arcs are also going to be congruent. So if two chords in a circle are congruent, then they determine two Sorry about that, I've got to read my words here first. If two chords in a circle are congruent, then their intercepted arcs are congruent. Okay, so the two arcs on the outside, so I'm talking about this arc right here, and I am talking about this arc over here. So if the chords are congruent, so these Blue chords here, C, D, and A, B, if those are congruent, the central angles are congruent to each other, but also if we measured out these arcs, these arcs on the outside are going to be congruent as well, and they'll have the same measure as the central angles as we had talked about up at the top 